For our next PAG, we are going to identify the concentration of this hydrochloric acid. It is unknown at this point. By doing a neutralization reaction with this sodium hydrocarbonate. What we're going to do, we're going to make a standard solution of this, a known concentration, and then we're going to make that the analyte of the titration. Let's do this one step at a time. We can measure 2.1 grams of the sodium hydrocarbonate. And now we must place this in a clean, dry beaker and we must ensure that all of the sodium hydrocarbonate has gone into the beaker. So we'll rinse it with some distilled water. We to make sure that we do not lose any. Now an important detail is we need to ensure that this is all dissolved before we put it into the volumetric flask. And we can add a fairly substantial amount of distilled water to this. As long as we don't go above 250, we'll be okay. Just give it a good stir, break up any large pieces that you can see. That looks dissolved. Now an important detail here is we should rinse the spatula so that we've got all of the sodium hydrocarbonate in there. And then we will add this carefully to our volumetric flask. Now because of the residue still in here, we're going to make sure that we've completely rinsed the speaker. Just well, add this as well. Again. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to fill the uh, volumetric flask so the bottom of the meniscus of the water is exactly equal to this marker here. With our standard, we now need to do everyone's favourite, making sure that the lid is on, holding a finger on the lid, holding a finger on the base, we have to invert about four times to allow uniform mixing throughout and to allow any remaining undissolved pieces to just make sure they are totally dissolved. And there we have it, this is our standard solution. We're going to take 25 millilitres of this put it in the conical flask at the bottom. This is going to be the analyte. So I'm now going to take 25 millilitres out of our standard using a 25 millilitre pipette. Now you might have a different end on this. Uh, this way is quite simple because it allows you to wind it up and then press the button for release. And you'll fill it all the way up to the marker, bottom of the meniscus relative to this, and then I'm going to put it into the conical flask. Excellent, 25 millilitres exactly, and in he goes. So the next stage is we're going to add the acid of unknown concentration to the burette. Now at the moment it is in an open position, so we're going to close the stopcock and we're going to add this. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill it all the way up to about the top here. An important detail is you don't want to fill it past the zero marker because you need to take a measurement of the start and finish volume. Another thing 
is we want to flush the air bubble out of the bottom. So we will allow it to flow. The air bubble is now gone. So we're now ready to do our titration. We must add the indicator, in this case, methyl orange. Orange will, methyl orange will go from yellow to orange when the end point is reached. So we take a few drops of this and we add, there we go. And throughout, we're going to swirl so that we get a nice observable color change. Now the first thing that we need to measure is the, for the titrant, the hydrochloric acid, the starting volume is going to be, for this, I'm just going to rotate it so I can see it better. There we go. The starting volume is 1.75 centimetres. Okay, now what we're going to do is we'll do the titration until we reach that end point. Now the idea of this is that we'll do this several times until we get concordant results. So let's have, okay. And there, the end point has been reached. We've got 3.50 as the volume, 3.50 centimetres cubed. Now we're going to repeat this several times and we will have a look at those results. We're looking to see concordance, where the results are close enough together to the nearest 0 0.05 centimetres cubed. You're going to want to record your data like this with the different trials in these different columns and in the rows all of your raw data, the initial burette reading, the final burette reading and the titer, which is the difference between the two. Now the very first time you run the experiment you don't know when the end point is coming and you might miss it, you might not be very careful, but you'll get a feeling for roughly where it is and so nearly always trial one is just preliminary and it's a write-off. But after that, you're looking for concordance. Now, the, uh, the, the tolerance of the burette is 0 0.05 centimetres cubed. So you're looking for two results that are the same as this. So you can see that in this second run here, and in my fourth run there, I did get uh, these two concordant results. It was 1.45 centimetres cubed both times. So there's my average, and that's the number I'm going to go for. That is how many centimetres cubed of hydrochloric acid I need to neutralise 25 centimetres cubed of my sodium hydrocarbonate solution. Now it's time to work out what the um, concentration was of the hydrochloric acid. So the very first thing we need to do is we need to work out how many moles of the sodium hydrocarbonate we had. So, um, First of all, we need to know what the, uh, the molar mass of sodium hydrocarbonate is. It's going, to be, it's going to be 23 plus 1 plus 12 plus 16 times 3, adding up the molar masses of all the things, which is 84 grams. Now, with that, we can work out how many moles is present, because the number of moles is equal to the sample mass divided by the molar mass and say so the sample mass was 
100 grams divided by 84 grams means that we have a number of moles of 0.025. Uh, so 0.025 moles. Now this is in the standard, so this was in the volumetric flask, 250 millilitres of this. But we didn't have that much as an analyte, we only had 25 mil as an an analyte, which means the actual total number of moles we had was 10 times less than this because it was a volume 10 times less. So the actual number of moles of the um, the sodium hydrocarbonate, the NaHCO3, was equal to 0.025 moles. Well, okay, now the next stage is we need to compare the moles ratio. It's a 1 to 1 moles ratio, 1 mole of that reacts and is neutralised by 1 mole of that, which means that this is also equal to the number of moles of HCl in our 1.45 centimetres cubed. So what's the concentration? Well we know that the concentration is given by the number of moles divided by the volume. So the concentration of our acid therefore is going to be the number of moles, 0.025 divided by the volume. Now this has got to be in decimetres cubed, that is of course in centimetres cubed, so 1.45 divided by a thousand, puts that into decimeters cubed, equals 1.74. So it's 1.74 moles uh, per decimeter cubed, or molar, 1.74 molar. Hence the gloves, it was strong stuff, and also why it required so little of the acid to neutralize the analyte. It was a concentrated acid. The extension opportunities for this panic ask us to consider the percentage uncertainty on these measurements, on all of these various different instruments involved. Now, bear in mind that the percentage uncertainty can be cal calculated by taking the absolute uncertainty, the difference in x, divided by the, the actual value itself, the measurement taken, and then times 100%. Now, for our measurements, the, uh, the top hand balance, if it had um, an absolute uncertainty of 0 0.01 uh, grams, and we had a sample which was 2.10 grams, then the absolute uncertainty, the percentage uncertainty of the top hand balance, it actually comes out that that had a percentage uncertainty of 0 0.48. Percent, less than half a percent. Now the uh, the Burette had an absolute uncertainty of 0.05 compared to a measurement of 1.45, times 100 percent, and the answer comes out as 3.45. Others, uh, the flask has uh, an uncertainty of 0.2 that can take 250 mil. So that times 100% has a percentage uncertainty of 0.08. So the actual volumetric flask has fairly astonishing accuracy. And then the final, the pipette itself. And that was 0 0.06, 0 0.06 over 25 times 100%. And so the pipette has an accuracy of 0.24%. So therefore, the greatest source of uncertainty in this experiment is the burette itself. A final question that is posed to you by the guidance is why does uh, sodium carbonate, hydrated sodium carbonate, why is that not something that you can make a standard solution from? And that's because of the waters of crystallisation. If you've not accounted for that, then it's going to change the concentration of your analyte. 
The other, sodium hydroxide, uh, is not a good powder to add to make into a standard solution because it absorbs so much water from the air and therefore the concentration of your analyte is again going to be other than what you believe it to be.